390 Wagon Master here. So we had a question come in off the internet and Christopher Smith asked, who makes a good dummy load? Long story short, the MFJ 264 is one of my favorites, okay? There are many dummy loads out there on the market. Not so many now as there used to be. You can get wet dummy loads, dry dummy load. A wet dummy load is where they look like a coax connector sticking out of the top of a paint can. And those will generally give you longer key down times because what happens is they take and they put a 50 ohm resistor bank in um, a gallon of um, oil and the oil cools it down. But this is basically a dummy. This is a real basic dummy load. In fact, I, many of you guys have probably seen these from back in the day. And what this is basically is just a 50 ohm resistor to ground. So one end of the resistor is here. The other end of the resistor is to ground. I'll bring my little meter unit over here. And I will test this. I'll put one leg on ground. Put one leg on here, and we have about 57.8 ohms. So this is within tolerance. This is going to give us a decent SWR. You know, it could be a one to one to one, one to two, kind of just depends on what the tolerance of any given resistor is. And what they do with the cantennas, the big ones that you dump in the oil, they just basically dump that resistor in the oil, and the oil dissipates the heat. Okay, another version is. The dry dummy load, and I like the MFJ 264 dry dummy, dry dummy load, and this is not soaked in oil. This works on basically uh, convection, so we have our resistance load in this enclosure right here, and then we have slots all the way around it, or perforations all the way around it, and what happens is it works on convection. Once this um, unit in the in the inside the uh, casing here starts getting hot. It radiates heat, and as it radiates heat, it's sucking cool air in from the bottom, and that's how that works, and that's pretty good. And, you know, just for the heck of it, let's see what the uh, resistance is on that puppy. And we are sitting at 57.6. No problem. Totally within tolerance. Back in 05, 06, this, this, or this uh, dummy load, this thing went for about $79, $79.95, something like that. And I got to be honest with you, uh, it's probably the best 80 bucks one could spend. Right now, uh, today I just looked and these are going for $89.95. However, because of the pandemic, um, these are hard to get, as with a lot of electronics are right now. So, you know, look around, see, you'll find something, but you'll find one of these. Anyway, I really like this piece. Um, just long story short, it has been very, very dependable. Um because this is not soaked in oil and it does not have any liquids to dissipate the heat, you know, you can only key down on this thing so long before it just, just gets brutally hot. I have never gotten it that hot, though. But here they give us a little graph here. So we have 1,500 watts. We'll let it run for 10 seconds. So you can do a 10-second key up in this and then let it rest for a while. Um, I'm usually in this range between about the five and 600 range. And yeah, I mean, you know, you can do it for, what is this, about 35 seconds or so. But um, I've had no problem with this thing heating up. One time I did have some big power going through here, and I just put a little 12-volt box fan right next to it, and it served my purpose. Now, do I need a 1,500-watt meter? Well, you know, the average Joe, yeah, maybe not. However... I would do it anyway, because the other version of this, they have a more inexpensive one, and I think it's only about $20 less, $20 or $30 less. It's a 300-watt dummy load. Same uh, frequency coverage from 1 to 650 megs, um, but it's only rated at 300 watts, meaning you know there's going to be that day when you maybe want to run a big striker or something into your dummy load or whatever. And because physically this is bigger... Um, it's going to dissipate the heat better, and bigger is always better. So this is a very important piece to a station. So whether you're a CB or ham operator, anything that any any part of your station that has a transmitter, you have to have a dummy load. This is a very very vital piece of gear to have in your little test arsenal. Um, in my opinion, it's darn well, it's darn near as important as a watt meter, because what you want to do is you want to have a watt meter that feeds into this. So you get the most accurate, reasonably accurate uh, meter reading 
that you're going to get um, versus using an outdoor antenna and say running from your radio to a watt meter and then to 50, 75 feet of coax to an unknown load from your antenna. You don't know how that changes with power um, depending on on the um, the way the coil and the antenna is is or if it has a little bit of uh, reflected SWR coming back like when you're whistling into the microphone that reflected signal is going to give you a bogus reading on your um, watt meter to whereas this you really don't have that at all so I've never seen it anyway so we're gonna uh, open this puppy up and take a little look-see inside Okay, we've taken the screws out of the cabinet. Just standard self-tapping sheet metal type screws. And this is like a powder coated shell. And here we have the insides of it. So dusty and all. This sits back in the corner of my bench way out of the way, permanently hooked up to uh, my bird uh, what is that? 4431 watt meter. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting construction. Here is how it hooks up to that front SO239. It's removable, it looks like. You have to undo this, this little cage here. This is going to be more like an RF shielding type cage, so you don't really radiate you very much, I would imagine. Kind of an interesting design. And yes, that little piece of double stick in there is covering up some writing that I have in there. That was my call sign. And uh, you guys don't want to know that. Voila. And there she is. Just a basic resistor, carbon resistor. I'm trying to read what it says on this little connector here. 50 amps, something, something, something. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a fit and finish issue. Look, there's a little burr right there. You know, while we're on that subject, real quick, when I bought this... First thing I did when I took it out of the box is I did what I do to all MFJ products. First of all, I used the right screwdriver. I did not use a number two. I used a number one, and I, I checked to make sure that these were all snugged up nice. I made sure that these were all tight here because while I'm doing that, again, um, I learned back with my very first MFJ product back in 92. That was my VersaTuner 2, my MFJ 941D. I learned that you need to go in and kind of snug things up a little bit with these guys. Um, you know, a lot of people slam MFJ, and it's kind of sad that they do. They kind of have a reputation of being well, a little on the junky side. And really, I think the product is designed pretty good. But, you know, you didn't pay a lot of money for this stuff, so you kind of get what you pay for. And that's why I'm saying go in and just tighten things up, make, make sure things are snugged up a little bit. Maybe put a little open end on that and just make sure everything's good. Um, I had to do that on my tuner, and um, I'm glad I did because I found some loose components. And that just saved me from having to, have to go in and um, tear it apart or possibly have a problem. So, anyway, I think overall for $89, I really don't think you can go bad with this. Um, I think this is going to be just, this is a piece of test gear that, honestly, everybody has to have. Uh, what's going on there, Mike? Um, it, it amazes me how many operators don't have dummy loads. And they just, you know, they'll maybe do a little tweak and peek on their radio, which is a whole different subject. You probably shouldn't be in their golden screwdriver in your radio. However, that being said, they do it through an antenna. And like I say, you can get a lot of variables and power readings and whatnot because of going through an, uh, a run of coax and because, you know, the antenna's 
reacting different when you throw power to it, whether it's a reflected signal or not. And uh, with something like this, you uh, just don't have those issues. Now, is there a front and rear to this? Not really. Okay. So anyway. So, Christopher, there you go. I hope this answers your question. Next video will be on... Oh, I think an emergency test bench. I'm just going to do a video on a really, really, really down and dirty test bench before I put all this back in the corner. I usually tuck the, the dummy load way back there in the corner. I run a short piece of coax, a little one foot jumper from the output of the meter to the dummy load. This is a set it and forget it thing. I, um, I have this in line with my antenna system and, um, then I don't have to keep reaching back and undoing connectors. And then I know that this particular combination or this particular combination gives me a known um, reading. All right. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.